In a truly unique moment of naval warfare, in February 1945, a duel took place at Periscope Depth between two submarines, HMS Venturer of the Royal Navy and U-864 of the Kriegsmarine, the result of this battle being the only instance in history where one submarine was intentionally sunk by another while both craft were submerged, and in so doing halting the shipment of what were believed to be top-secret materials destined for Germany's allies in Japan. Representing the British during this battle was HMS Venturer, pennant number P-68, which had been laid down in August 1942 and launched in May 1943, the ship being the lead vessel of the V-class submarine of which 42 were ordered from the Vickers Armstrong works at Barrow in Furness and Walker on Tyne, although only 34 units were eventually delivered during the three-year production run. HMS Venturer, as a ship designed more for coastal patrol, being armed with four 21-inch bow torpedo tubes with eight torpedoes, and a single 3-inch deck gun, while its two 615-horsepower diesel-electric Paxman diesel generators could drive the ship to a top speed of 11 knots surfaced and 10 knots submerged, the vessel being operated by a complement of 33 crew. U-864, meanwhile, was an ocean-going leviathan by comparison, being a member of the formidable Type 9 D-2 U-boat class, of which 194 members terrorised the world's oceans during the height of World War II. This unit having been laid down in October 1942 and launched in August 1943 at the AG Wieserwerks in Bremen, its crew comprising 63 officers and men, and was armed with six torpedo tubes, four bow, two stern, with 24 21-inch torpedoes, a 4.1-inch SK C-32 deck gun, a 1.5-inch Flak M-42 anti-aircraft gun, and a pair of additional 0.79-inch C-30 anti-aircraft guns. It's two 4,300 horsepower man supercharged nine-cylinder diesel engines pushing the vessel to a top speed of 21 knots surfaced and 7 knots submerged. During their service careers prior to the battle, HMS Venturer, commanded from May 1943 by 25-year-old Lieutenant James Stuart Launders, had undertaken patrol operations along the Norwegian coast in order to intercept enemy supply vessels and U-boats arriving and departing the pens at Bergen and Trondheim. Launders' skill at the mathematics and complex calculations involved in establishing a target's distance, speed and direction of travel, earning him three kills on Axis merchant ships, the Thor, the Friedrichshafen and the Vang, during his first year of command, followed by his appointment as a Companion of the Distinguished Service Order, or DSO, after sinking the surfaced U-771 with torpedoes on November 11, 1944, in the Andfjord near Hastad, resulting in the deaths of all 51 hands aboard the U-boat, while U-864, commanded throughout her entire career by Corvette and Capitaine Ralph Reimer Wolfram, served with the 4th U-boat flotilla and was assigned to crew training from her commissioning in December 1943 until October 31, 1944, after which she was reassigned to the 33rd U-boat flotilla. As part of its first combat mission, U-864 was assigned to partake in Operation Caesar, a transport mission organised between the wartime allies of Nazi Germany and the Japanese Empire in order to supply the latter due to its own lack of resources and advanced technology by way of U-boat shipments. The voyage of U-864 including 1,857 steel cylinders containing some 65 tonnes of metallic mercury, a raw material essential in manufacturing explosive primers that Japan was severely lacking. Guidance systems for the V-2 ballistic missile, developed at the Pinamunda Army Research Center, and Junkers Yumo engine parts from the Messerschmitt ME-163 Comet and ME-262 Schwalbe jet fighters, the intention being to place these into what would become Japan's first jet aircraft, the Nakajima Kika, a license-built version of the ME-262, which would have been assigned to anti-ship and ground attack missions against the advancing allies in Southeast Asia and the Pacific War. The U-864's regular complement of men and officers also being accompanied by several aircraft engineers from Messerschmitt. Departing her home port of Kiel in December 1944, U-864, carrying a larger than normal complement of 70 crew and three passengers, immediately met problems due to trouble with the submarine's snorkel, before running aground while transiting the Kiel Canal, which caused severe damage to the vessel's hull that required urgent repair, forcing Captain Wolfram to set a course for the U-boat pens at Bergen in order to administer an emergency patch-up. Their problems made worse only a few days later, when the submarine base and harbour were heavily bombed by RAF Lancasters of Dambuster 617 Squadron and Mosquitoes of 9 Squadron, which saw at least one of Barnes Wallace's famous Tall Boy earthquake bombs penetrate the pens themselves and cause massive damage to its interior, delaying U-864's mission further. Meanwhile, Lieutenant Launders, aboard HMS Venturer, stationed at the Royal Naval Base in Lerwick, was informed, 
following the decryption of a message transmitted by the Nazi High Command via the Enigma coding system, that U-864 was undertaking a mission dubbed Operation Caesar, in which it would deliver aircraft parts and technicians to aid Japan's war effort, his objective being to intercept and destroy the U-boat at what was believed to be its general location in the vicinity of Faya, an island in the far west of Norway. Eventually, on February 7, 1945, U-864 had been repaired and set sail on its trans-Arctic voyage to Japan, passing through the Faya area off the Norwegian coast before HMS Ventura had arrived, and thus went undetected, although the mission's progress was fatally hampered soon afterwards when, due to the possibly botched installation of an air compressor, one of the engines began to suffer a distinctly audible misfire, and in the face of highly sensitive anti-submarine patrols in the open sea, being conducted by British surface vessels, submarines and aircraft, Captain Wolfram opted to return to Bergen in order for the unit to be repaired, unaware that the Venturer was now waiting for him in waters which had previously been free of Allied submarines. In a distinctly bold move, Lieutenant Launders, upon the Venturer's arrival in the waters off Faya, chose to turn off the submarine's ASDIC sonar system, as while this could accurately locate both surface and submerged vessels, it could also be detected by the enemy the British officer deciding to utilise the far more archaic and crude hydrophone, which would essentially allow the ship's operator to listen to noises outside the submarine. And with U-864's engine misfiring, the hydrophone operator was able to detect the vessel's approach as it passed by Faya, heading back south towards Bergen, this noise initially being mistaken by the venturer for the sound of a civilian boat before the officer of the watch saw the U-boat's periscope passing them by through his own. With Launders having concluded that the noise in the periscope did indeed belong to U-864, he continued to track the submarine, but did not immediately call his ship to action stations, hoping that, if the Venturer remained undetected, the enemy U-boat would surface and thus allow for an easier target. But after 25 minutes of low-speed pursuit, it was apparent that the U-864 had detected the British submarine, and had now started to perform an underwater zigzag manoeuvre so as to throw off any potential torpedo attacks. Based on the knowledge of submarine warfare at the time, any attempt by Launders to attack the U-864 while she was submerged was futile, but the British officer refused to allow his enemy to escape, and after three hours of following the gigantic enemy U-boat, observing the pattern of its zigzag movements, he manually plotted a firing solution against a three-dimensionally manoeuvring target in what would become the first occasion where such a technique was used against a submerged enemy vessel without computer-aided torpedo targeting systems his calculations having to consider the target's position in terms of its variable depth, horizontal position, and forward distance from the Venturer, Launders having no visual indication of where the U-864 actually was, while making only fleeting use of the periscope, for fear that it would give away his own position to the stern torpedoes of his enemy. Demonstrating incredible skill and highly developed tactical abilities, at 12.12pm, Launders deployed four torpedoes from a distance of around 2,200 yards before forcing the Venturer into a crash dive, so as to avoid retaliation from the U-864, each of these four torpedoes being launched at 17 second intervals and taking approximately four minutes to reach their target, the U-864 being able to easily hear the approach of the torpedoes through their own hydrophonic system, and thus enacting their own crash dive to evade the incoming projectiles. What Captain Wolfram hadn't considered, though, was that rather than thinking on a two-dimensional level, Launders had fired the torpedoes at different vertical elevations, and thus the German officer had inadvertently placed his ship in the path of the last of the four torpedoes fired by the Venturer, which struck the U-boat amidships and immediately ruptured the hull, causing the submarine to instantaneously implode and split in two, tumbling to the bottom of the North Sea with the loss of all 73 hands, the U-864 only 36 miles from its comparative salvation at the Bergen U-boat pens. In the aftermath of U-864's destruction, several of the Venturer's crew received awards ranging from promotions to decorations, while Launders himself was awarded a bar to his DSO for gallantry, judgment and skill in a successful patrol, making him the first, and as of 2022 only, submarine commander to be publicly acknowledged as having sunk another submarine in combat while both vessels were submerged, Launders continuing to serve with the Royal Navy in the post-war era and being promoted to lieutenant commander in 1949 and commander in 1957, his postings including a number of different vessels and shore bases in both naval and NATO service before retiring in November 1974, eventually passing away from natural causes in January 1988 at the age of 69, while HMS Ventura was stood down after the end of World War II before being sold to the Royal Norwegian Navy in 1946, seeing continued service under the name Utstein until January 1964 
after which she was struck off and sent to the scrapyard. In March 2003, after decades of searching, U-864's wreck was discovered in two parts at a depth of 150 metres in the Bergen approaches off the coast of Faida, and although rumours as to the vessel potentially carrying uranium oxide were found to be untrue, as was the case with the similarly unsuccessful mission to Japan of sister ship U-234, the U-boat still presents a major safety concern due to both its weaponry and the 65 tonnes of mercury within its shattered hull, the fear being that the metal cylinders with the mercury inside may corrode at a faster than predicted rate and release their toxic contents across the Norwegian coast, causing ecological damage, which, at present, has yet to be fully estimated, resulting, after years of debate since the wreck's discovery, in an October 2018 proposal to entomb the submarine with sand and rocks in order to contain any further contamination. In the end, the victory of Lieutenant Launders and the crew of HMS Ventura was a testament to the former's superb skill at mathematics and natural talent for naval warfare, which allowed him to see the battlefield as more than a two-dimensional plane, and in so doing defied the limitations of contemporary technology through an incredible degree of cunning and a little bit of luck. Launders and his men not only helping to stop the shipment of vital equipment to the Japanese, in a move that could have potentially extended the Pacific War, but also cementing themselves into the pages of history for a monumental feat that has, to this day, never been repeated.